This is Wraith from Wraith Rain. I'm an author of serialized gay romance fiction. Every week on this podcast, I'll be reading a chapter from one of my gay fantasy shifter serials called Dragon's Rain. I'll explain at the break how you can find out more about the story and others I write. So let's get to it. Chapter 26 City Dragon, Country Dragon. With his heart in his throat and the reverberation of the explosion in his ears, Caden was moving towards the chain link door to get to the injured people when Valerius caught his shoulder and pulled him back. What are you doing? Let me go! I need to get to the people! Caden struggled, but he couldn't shake off Valerius's hand. No, Caden, you cannot be seen here, Valerius growled. His expression was wrenched, though. Neither of us can. We must go. Now. But my brothers! Landry's face was white as milk. From his expression, Caden guessed that Valerius's heart went out to her, that the two boys were in humans first. They were citizens of his realm, and he had been unable to save them. Valerius's words confirmed this. You may go, Landry, but tell no one of Caden, myself, or any of the plan, understood? She nodded her head like she was a marionette on strings. She flew out of the alleyway and through the door to the bomb site. Valerius, I want to go help, Caden cried. The white dragon spirit was making wounded sounds, wanting to nuzzle hurts and spread its wings over the injured. You think your presence or mine would help in this situation? At a bombing of a human's first meeting? Valerius's eyebrows rose. Caden thought of how the two Humans First members had known that the White Dragon Shifter was here and that they must know what he looked like. I don't care if people know who I am. Caden wouldn't trade people's safety for his own. Do you have medical training? Valerius asked, his expression curious. I... No, Caden admitted. Are you a police officer? You know I'm not. Caden thumped one hand on Valerius's chest. So how could you help? There is no bomb that either of us could block with our bodies. There is no way to turn back time. Valerius gently took both of Caden's hands in his. It was so tender that it shocked him. And Caden felt the burn of tears in his eyes. But, but to just run away. Do you think I wish to leave? Do you think I want? Valerius bit back whatever words wanted to escape his lips. Think on this, Caden. A bomb was set off amongst people who hate shifters, and the two of us are within shouting distance of it. They think it was us. That we were responsible, even though if we wanted to kill everyone, we'd hardly need to use a bomb. Exactly. But they would say that you were in the presence of two of the bombs, and that I was silencing someone who had just called me a murderer. Valerius reminded him. Caden understood it all then. Valerius and he would be cast as the villains. The true culprits would never be caught. He cast around to make sure no one was around. We can't be found here. I'm glad you agree. Valerius gently took his elbow and led him down the alleyway past the stinking piles of vegetables, whose stench couldn't quite hide the acrid smell of explosives in his nose. Caden drew against the powerful body as the sounds of moans, cries, and shouts of pain and bewilderment slowly faded out as they moved away from the site of the bombing. Valerius made a call on his cell phone. Simi? Valerius asked, anxiety sharpening his tone. Are you safe, your majesty? Caden could hear Simi's strained voice over the earpiece in response. Valerius softened his tone. You can hear that I am. Nothing could happen to me in any case. Now, what you know. Single explosive device. Looks to have been placed at the back of the meeting hall. We have two dozen injured, two confirmed dead, Simi answered crisply. The realization that Wally and Rose could have been injured occurred to Caden in that moment. The emotional impact was like walking into a brick wall. He skidded to a halt. Valerius looked down at him. Wally, Rose... Are they among the injured or, or, or the dead? And Landry's brothers? Hayden's mouth was as dry as dust. Simi, are Wally or Rose among those you mentioned? What about Landry's brothers? Larius asked. Caden blinked as he realized that Simi knew exactly who all of these people were by their first names. It made sense he would know about Wally, but Rose? How did they know about her? 
And had Landry's brothers gotten on the claw's radar already? Caden then realized he didn't care how. He just hoped that Simmy knew Rose and Wally well enough to identify them. Ross and Harvey are huddled around Jasper Hawes, who made it out just fine, too. Simmy's voice showed almost disappointment at that. Neither Rose nor Wally was among the injured or dead. I see no sign of them. They must have headed out of there immediately. Caden released a breath and curled forward, hands on his knees as relief flowed through him. Valeria stroked his back and he found himself pressing up against that hand, relishing the solidity of it. Is anyone claiming responsibility? Valerius asked. No one, just like last time, Simi responded. Keep me informed, Valerius instructed and cut the call. But he was soon making another one as they started walking again. It was not a surprise who he was reaching out to as he said, Shioni. Valerius, is Caden all right? She asked. Caden pinked. He was touched that she was worried about him. Iolera, though, raised his head and puffed out its wings. Of course, I was here, and his spirit would not let anything happen to him, Valerius answered. Yes, you're right, but both of them are so new and young and foolish, yes. But they've already come up against one bomb in as many days, Valerius interrupted. I'm not foolish, Caden protested, but somehow having to argue that point didn't seem to be helping his cause. Will you be coming back to High Reach? Shioni asked. No, I am going to proceed with my plans. That is better, do you not think? He asked. Yes, most likely. Tomorrow, though, you should speak. The people need to hear you, she said. If I have anything to say. You know the line I walk, he told her. Yes, but you forget to add people's simple need for you into your balancing, she responded gently. Valerius said nothing, but Caden thought his expression grew more pained at the thought of people needing him. We must find out who is behind this, Shioni. It must be stopped. Valerius's voice was arctic. Yes, my king. He ended that call and they continued to walk through the winding alleyway in silence. If we're not going to high reach, where are we going? Maybe we should head over to Wally's. He and Rose might have seen something, Caden suggested. I should text them. Valerius grabbed the phone and stuffed it into his pocket of his long coat. That is the last thing you will do. There will be no evidence of you being here or having any part in this. Text messages included. Wally and Rose will be questioned and informed that you are fine. Caden understood this reasoning. So I should head home and you need to shift. We are doing that, remember? Valerius interrupted. But isn't Shioni right? Shouldn't you be there and not in some field somewhere showing me how to shift? Caden asked. Anything I say to the people must be based on facts. I will not have those facts until the investigation is done, Valerius explained. The authorities and the elected officials will jump to speak and assure their constituents that all is well. I cannot. Because you don't think that things are going to be okay? Caden studied Valerius's mostly hidden face. The Dragon King looked grim. His powerful jaw was clenched. His lips were compressed into a tight line. His eyes burned with balefire. Caden would not want that look sent towards him. Partially, and also because if I get involved, then anyone who has ill feelings towards me, and there are many, will be emboldened to hurt more people, Valerius answered. Well, at least we know it wasn't humans first that set that first bomb, Caden said. That narrows things down, doesn't it? What makes you think it wasn't them? Again, Valerius was raising an eyebrow as if Caden were being quite foolish again. Because they wouldn't bomb their own people? And Jasper Halls was there, so those are the exact reasons humans first could be behind both bombings, Valerius carefully explained. Do you think there were no humans first members in the square today? Because there were. They would have died, just the same as everyone else but for your bravery. Jasper Hawes is a zealot, Caden. Zealots believe in sacrifice, especially if it doesn't involve themselves. Yeah, I guess Jasper wasn't hurt, Caden frowned. The bomb was at the back of the crowd, far away from him and anyone in the higher ranks of the organization. How very lucky for all of them, don't you think? How very lucky for them, don't you think? Just some low-level people killed or injured that they can use for sympathy, that they care truly nothing about. Valerius answered with a thin smile. 
They'd reached the end of the alleyway, and Valerius led them over to a black Land Rover with tinted windows. It wasn't pristine, having mud on the tires, and the side panels were also slathered with dirt. So Caden was utterly slummoxed when Valerius took out a key fob and unlocked the doors. Get in, Valerius said as he slipped into the driver's seat. Um, okay. This is your car? Caden asked as he got in and clipped on his seatbelt. Yes, why? Um, it's not fancy and it's real dirty. And it's just sitting here out in the open like everyone else's cars, Caden said. Exactly. Valerius turned on the engine and performed a U-turn in the street. Are you really not going to tell me why you have some random dirty car just parked out in the mid? Caden turned and stared at him. For just such occasions as these when I need one, Valerius answered. We cannot leave reach in our dragon forms from here. Someone will see how close we are to the market where the bomb was. I sometimes leave the capital like this so that people do not know I am away. Okay, makes sense to me. Caden noted that they were not headed towards the main highway that would lead them out of the mid. He then saw a long line of headlights stopped in the usual busy highway. They've shut down the highway because of the bombing, haven't they? Yes, that is procedure, which is why we are not going that way. Well, we would not go that way even if we would not be blocked in for hours. I have a secret exit, one of many from Reach. I hope you are enjoying Dragon's Reign so far. Now, I've told you about the Dark Earth manga that I put out with the help of the amazing artist T-Wolf, but that manga came from a huge serial called The Dark Earth. Like in Dragon's Reign, we have a young man who is far more than he seems. In The Dark Earth, a young elven champion rises. Though adopted, Aiden has always believed he was a normal kid until he moves to Devil's Ridge. Then he discovers that not only is he a reincarnated elven mage king, but he is destined to lead the fight against the elves' ancient enemy, the demon Cybella. If that's not enough, he is courted by both an elven prince and an enigmatic elven mage, who are also both reincarnated from Aiden's long-forgotten past. If you'd like to check out the first few chapters of the Dark Earth, Dark Champion, for free, the link is down below in the description. Valerius actually gave him an almost boyish grin. Okay, I'm all for this. Caden found himself grinning back, but then he thought of the bombing and the injured. Can't do anything about that, Caden thought. I should focus on what I can. Giving Isle Air a chance to spread its wings is a good thing. The spirit was moving restlessly, anxious to get a chance to fly. Soon, I promise, Isle Air. It cooed lovingly at Caden. Valerius turned down what looked like a cul-de-sac. There was a grouping of townhomes that lined one of the outer edges of the mid. There was a large, double-sized garage door that presumably housed the cars of the people who lived there. But as they approached the garage, the door glided silently upwards, and there was revealed not a garage filled with cars, but a sloping drive that disappeared around a curve. They entered the garage and drove down the ramp. It was like being swallowed by a giant. That's so cool, Caden laughed as Valerius drove them effortlessly around the tight curves. I think so. Reach is a warren of secret passages and exits, Valerius explained. Caden thought, but did not say, and that means the bombers could be using those secret ways to get in and out and around Reach with their bombs and not be seen. Valerius might have thought of it as well because he looked grim again. Even as they exited Reach, and started driving on a smooth road out into the countryside, Caden found himself wanting to get Valerius out of those black thoughts, and the best way to do that was to poke the bear, or poke the dragon, as the case may be. Besides, he was curious about all things Valerius. Speaking of how you found me tonight, did you install some kind of tracking chip in that phone? Caden narrowed his eyes when Valerius didn't answer. Of course you did! That's how you found us! I'm going to have you chipped next, Caden. I knew you were getting yourself in trouble. What did you think you were going to accomplish with this little spy mission? We needed to find out whether Ross and Harvey and Humans First were really part of the bombing, Caden explained. So we decided we would come to this meeting and... And... And what? You thought Jasper Hawes would admit his guilt in front of all and sundry? Hilarious narrowed his eyes at him. No! 
When Valerius continued to stare at him, Caden added, Not exactly. We didn't know what would happen. We decided to have Rose and Wally do surveillance among the crowd with Jasper and Landry's brothers. Maybe they might overhear stuff. Landry and I were here to see if I spotted the shifter girl, and then Landry was going to hack her brother's computers. The last part is completely asinine, Valerius remarked. None of it is. Caden slumped back in his seat and crossed his arms over his chest, completely nettled. Valerius might not be in a bad mood, but Caden now was. They drove in silence, but he felt Valerius' eyes on him. Finally, with a sigh, the Dragon King said, For a man who wants to live a normal life, you sure certainly do not act like it. It wasn't a stupid plan, Caden shouted. I'm not stupid. Valerius blinked. I do not think that you are. Yes, you do. You think I'm naive, foolish, stupid. Caden gritted his teeth. Valerius chewed this over. I do feel you are naive and occasionally foolish, but never stupid. And your heart is always in the right place. How are you making the distinction between naive, foolish, and stupid? Caden's arms, though, slightly loosened. The first two are due to inexperience, not lack of intelligence. You are very young, and these types of things are not, well, they are not easy, even for those who are used to it, Valerius said. Landry is my friend. Her brothers are idiots, but I couldn't just, just leave them to be railroaded, Caden explained. Landry was hysterical with worry. I had to do something. Caden, his name was said with evident affection, but also a touch of exasperation. This is not a game. I know. Do you? Valerius twisted in his seat, because behaving like the Scooby-Doo gang doesn't show that. These people are dangerous. I know. Kane's voice was less strident, though. He was thinking of the people dead back in the market. What would you have done if those two humans first people had found you in Landry? Valerius asked. We would have pretended to just be interested people, you know? No one's special, Caden said. Except your eyes shine, Caden. They would have known you were a shifter and... All right! I get it. I get it. Caden rubbed his face with both hands. I don't know what we would have done. But I feel like I have... I have all this power. Or the possibility of it. And I can't do anything. Valerius was silent for long moments. Conceivably, I am the most powerful being on this planet. But I could do nothing tonight either. I could do nothing when the first bomb went off and nearly took your life. When I think of that, of you, Caden's arms dropped to his sides, the anger fleeing from him as fast as it had come. Valerius' expression made it not even a memory. He looked agonized. Without thinking, Caden touched Valerius' cheek. Hey, I'm here. I'm safe. Everything, everything will be okay. For a shocking moment, Valerius leaned his face into Caden's hand. Immediately, the Dragon King must have realized what he was doing because his head snapped up straight. But there was color in his cheeks. He did not look at Caden. For his part, Caden reluctantly brought down his hand. Iolair was practically leaning out of his chest towards Raziel, who was staring rather askance at all of this. Right, okay. This isn't weird or anything, Caden thought. I just caressed Valerius's cheek. And he liked it. And I liked it. So, um, Valerius, did I tell you that I know my spirit's name now? Caden asked, trying to fill the silence as they drove further and further from Reach's twinkling lights into the darkness of the lush countryside, where there were farms and forests that had flourished since the war. Did you? Valerius's hands were rather tight in the steering wheel. What is it? Or are you going to make me guess? Unlike you, I don't tease. Its name is Iolaire, Caden said, half proudly and half worriedly. He hadn't had a chance to look up the other meaning that Wally had mentioned. Valerius let out a laugh. Ha <laughs> ha, beautiful disaster. That most certainly suits the two of you. Is that what the name means? Caden nearly wailed. No, but it could be what it truly means with the history it has attached to it. But it is a beautiful name for a beautiful dragon, Larrys admitted. Iolair perked up and preened. Yes, you are beautiful, Iolair, Caden told it. But what about the disaster part? For one moment, he had an image of stormy seas and the cries of men, and then the image was gone. Iolair looked sad. 
Don't worry, Ilaire. I'm sure that wasn't your fault. It is a beautiful name, though. Ilaire cooed thankfully at him. We are here, Valerius said, and pulled off onto a dirt road. It looked little different than the other dirt roads that they had passed, but he did notice that the field was just earth. There were no crops, and there was a small stone outcropping that looked like it could be a handy launching pad. Valerius drew the Land Rover beside it and turned off the engine. The silence sounded awfully loud suddenly. Caden still thought he could hear the remnants of the explosion ringing in his ears. Come, this will make you feel better, Valerius said as he opened the car door. Caden quickly joined him. The air out here smelled sweeter than in the city. The only noises were the night insects. The stars above him were far brighter than they were in the city. He looked back towards Reach. It appeared like a glowing wedding cake. High Reach Castle at the very top looked inviting. For a moment, Caden felt drawn to it. He imagined both him and Valerius landing there, shifting into their human forms, and then heading to the fire pit to start cooking steak and drinking red wine again. And then they would curl together. Caden's cheeks flamed as he thought of what would happen next. You look distracted, Valerius said with a frown. Caden's head snapped towards him. No, um, just you look, I mean the night. The night is beautiful. The frown remained. Yes, it is beautiful. But you could enjoy it better in dragon form. Iolair will be very happy, I'm sure, to stretch its wings. Both Caden and Iolair liked how he said the spirit's name. Oh yeah, Iolair psyched. Caden grinned. Good. Caden frowned, though, as Valerius stripped off his long coat and began to toe off his leather boots. What are you doing? Caden asked. Valerius cocked his head to the side. What aren't you doing? I, are you, what? Caden, you need to get undressed. I need to what now? Valerius's eyes hooded. Take off your clothes, Caden, right now. I hope you enjoyed this week's chapter. Just a reminder that if you join Wraith Rain as a member, the membership is 15 to 20 episodes ahead of the free podcast. If you'd like to join and listen to all those extra podcasts, not to mention getting access to the other stories and manga on Wraith Rain, a link is down below.